I congratulate the armies of the Don Front on the successful completion of the liquidation of the enemy armies at Stalingrad. I thank all men, commanders and political workers for their excellent fighting. Commissar for Defense, Stalin. Stalingrad belongs now to history, but before the final pages turn to end a glowing chapter of valor and sacrifice, these pictures show us glimpses of the last few hours of the siege and its ending in the overthrow and capitulation of an avowedly invincible German army. The immense German armored forces flung against Stalingrad by Hitler's intuition had been encircled by the Red Army and inexorably driven back into the bend of the Don River. Stalingrad had become the center of a vast graveyard for hundreds of thousands of Axis soldiers. A graveyard too for thousands upon thousands of Soviet soldiers and civilians who laid down their lives for Russia. At a Russian headquarters on the outskirts of Stalingrad, the CEO is greeted by Marshal Voronov and General Rokossovsky, the officer commanding the Don Front. Closing in on those sections of the town still in German hands, the Russian artillery opens up on them at point-blank range. Axis forces have had enough. Enemy detachments begin to surrender, one by one at first, in increasing numbers, as the word goes round that the German commander has capitulated. Hitler's proud boast that senior German officers never laid down their arms was given the lie in Stalingrad. No less than 24 of Hitler's generals surrendered to the Russians. <music> Lieutenant General Zana, commander of the 100th Division, a man whose memory will long be abominated in France and Belgium. One of Hitler's dupes, the commander of a Romanian division, General Demetrio. These are men who were sacrificed uselessly to save their Führer's self-esteem. Hitler had sworn, Stalingrad shall be taken at any cost. And they were left to fight on, waiting despairingly for the order to withdraw. The order that never came. <laughs> 
Finally, the Commander-in-Chief of the defeated German army, von Paulus, and his Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Schmidt, are brought to Soviet headquarters for interrogation. This is the man, von Paulus, who only a few weeks before had been created a field marshal by Hitler's special instructions. This is the man who gave the order, take no prisoners, all Red Army men are to be killed. This is the same General Paulus, who in the last days of the battle issued another order. Germans must not surrender, otherwise their families in Germany will be shot. Shortly after this, he surrendered himself. He preferred life as a prisoner in the Soviet Union to death and glorification in the Nazi press. Twenty-two divisions of the German army were taken prisoners. Tens of thousands less fortunate lay lifeless beneath the snow. Huge quantities of tanks, guns, vehicles and every conceivable kind of military equipment had fallen into Soviet hands. So much for Hitler's intuition. So, at the beginning of February 1943, freedom came to the city. Stalingrad was more than just a Russian key town. Stalingrad was a bulwark of the United Nations. As such, it has become a symbol of the cause for which we fight, and its ultimate triumph over tyranny.